Hi everybody, it's Ms. Hamill and I'm here for your fifth video. This video is going to focus on cell division. Your goals are to understand the problems for cells, why they need to be small. You need to understand the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction. You need to understand the role of chromosomes in cell division. You need to understand the major events in the cell cycle. You need to compare and contrast mitosis to meiosis or meiosis. You need to understand how the cell cycle is regulated, what cancer is. You need to understand stem cells and the process of differentiation. So first let's talk about the cell cycle. And there's four main phases of the cell cycle. They are interphase, which consists of three parts, G1, S and G2. This is when the cell is in its normal conditions, it's growing and functioning. Then we have mitosis and this is when the nucleus of the cell divides. So again, as I said, interphase is the time between cell division. It's a period of growth. Um, it's preparation for cell division. During the S phase, the chromosomes are going to duplicate. And then in G2, more preparation for cell division. Then mitosis is going to occur, which splits the nucleus of the cell. Prokaryotic cell division is a little bit different. Of course, there's no nucleus. Um, this occurs through a process called binary fission. And the DNA is going to replicate. And then the cell is going to basically split and divide. Um, and this is going to happen once a cell reaches a certain size. Okay, so mitosis is a process used to make new cells, and it's very helpful for organisms because they need to replace their cells often. Um, think of your skin cells. If you get cut or scraped, we need to replace those cells quickly and rapidly. So um, this replaces somatic cells, which are all body cells except for the gametes, which are the sperm and egg. All of these cells are going to go through mitosis in humans. So a cell starts out with a full set of DNA or a full set of chromosomes. They're considered diploid. A full set of chromosomes is diploid. You have a set of DNA from your mom and a set from dad. So that makes you a diploid. And then the after the cell division, you have two new cells that both have the exact same diploid DNA for, as the original cell. So the parent cell is the first cell, and the daughter cells are going to be the cells that come from the parent cell. So human cells, we start out with 46 chromosomes, and after cell division, we end up with 46 chromosomes in our body cells or somatic cells. So mitosis occurs in multiple phases. The first is interphase, as we said, so it's normal cell growth, preparation for cell division. During this time, during S phase, the chromosomes are going to duplicate, so they prepare for cell division. So then we have prophase. During prophase, we have 92 chromosomes. Then we have, we're gonna skip down, you don't need to worry about prometaphase, but that's when the chromosomes begin to line up. Um, the metaphase, we have all of our chromosomes lined up in the middle along the equator. The spindle fibers are going to attach to the middle of the chromosome or to the centromere. Then during anaphase, the chromosomes are going to be pulled apart and then during telophase, the nucleus is going to begin to form around the new separated chromosomes. And then during cytokinesis, the rest of the cell will divide. So mitosis is the division of the nucleus, and cytokinesis is the division of the rest of the cell. Meiosis or meiosis is going to make the gametes or the sex cells. So a cell is going to start out as diploid, have 46 chromosomes. Then when they undergo meiosis or meiosis, they end up with four cells, 
four gametes were sex cells that are haploid, have half the number of chromosomes. Now this occurs because there's two cycles of division. So first, we're going to have interphase, so normal cell growth. Then we have prophase one. So during prophase, we are going to have the nucleus disappear. Then we have our prometaphase, then we have metaphase one. They line up in the middle. At this time, again, we have 92 chromosomes. Anaphase one pulled apart. Telophase one, we are splitting the nucleus. Then we have interphase one again. Metaphase two, I'm sorry, interphase two, prophase two. Metaphase two, we have two cells now, or two new nuclei that are having the chromosomes line up in the middle. Anaphase two, they pull apart. Telophase two, the nucleus is going to form around all of the new chromosomes, and then in cytokinesis, we end up with four cells. Each of them are genetically different, and each cell has 23 chromosomes in a human. So again, um, meiosis is different from mitosis because meiosis produces four genetically different cells. There are sex cells, so there are the sperm and the egg, and this occurs through a process of two divisions where mitosis produces identical cells, two identical cells, and each cell is going to be diploid. All right, so asexual reproduction versus sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction requires no sperm and egg, where sexual reproduction does require the fusion of a sperm and an egg, or male and female gametes. In asexual reproduction, the Organisms are going to be identical to their parent, so they're clones, where sexual reproduction produces genetic variation. Each sperm and egg are going to be different, genetically different. Um, there's very little to no sex or genetic variation in asexual reproduction. Um, the asexual reproduced organisms are more susceptible to disease because of the limited genetic variation where the sexual reproduced organisms are much healthier. Asexual reproduction is very quick. Um, you can produce many offsprings um, at one time or very rapidly, where in sexual reproduction it's not as quickly because you have to search for a mate, search for um, someone to switch your genetic material with. And then an example would be, of course, budding for asexual reproduction or binary fission like bacteria. So for sexual reproduction, we have our human, we have our human egg, 23 chromosomes, our human sperm, which is 23 chromosomes as well, which gives us a zygote with 46 chromosomes. And then from the zygote, the zygote will undergo mitosis and each cell thereafter will have 46 chromosomes. Okay, so cancer is going to be the uncontrolled cell growth. Um, of course, we've all encountered some form of cancer or somebody, we know somebody who has cancer and it's a devastating disease or devastating disorder. So what happens with cancer is that the cells do not respond to the signals that regulate the growth of most cells. So there's no signal for the cells to stop growing or dividing. So the cells are going to divide uncontrollably and form tumors. Now there's two different types of tumors. One is benign, that is not cancerous. The other is malignant, which is cancerous, and malignant tumors can spread. Um, and these cells will continue to grow and divide and divide and divide until treatment or unfortunately it causes death. Okay, stem cells are going to be cells that are not terminally differentiated and this means they have the ability to become many different types of cells. And this process by which cells become specialized is known as differentiation. So when we are forming, when we are developing, um, at first we are just a little ball of cells that are undifferentiated, essentially stem cells. And the stem cells are have the ability to form different types of cells and different types of tissue. So stem cell research is very promising. 
Um, scientists are hoping to cure many different types of diseases by producing stem cells and making different types of tissues that can treat different types of diseases or disorders. So it's very promising, but it's also very controversial due to the the way that we can harvest or get stem cells. Of course, you can get them from um, embryos, which is the ethical issue. Is it is it okay to do this? Many people say no, while others say yes. And you can also get stem cells from the adult, but they're not, they're, they're limited. They're not as um, unspecialized, shall I say. They're, they have a limited um, number of types of tissues that they can become. And that is all for this slideshow. Um, I hope you have a great evening. Good luck studying. And um, if you go ahead and take the quiz after this this video, that would be awesome. It's on Edline.